Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's talk is going to be on fungus, on candida. So we're going to chat about how candida can cause or be kind of at the root of it's a lot of chronic health issues. It can be the root of people's chronic fatigue, at their digestive issues, and it also could be a sign that there are deeper things underneath. A lot of people may think their problem is candida, but it may be something deeper in the gut like another infection. So let's talk about candida. So this is a cross section of your gut. Now candida is one of these microbes, right? We have candida or fungus, right? We have fungus is the greater umbrella in which candida sits under. Uh, in that realm, we have fungus, candida, etc. We have bacteria, parasites, various viruses. These can be stressors that can drive a leaky gut. So when we talk about candida and fungus, it's doing a couple of things here. It's putting stress on our adrenal glands, right? Our adrenals are these glands here that sit right on top of your kidneys, and these glands have to deal with inflammation. So stress from candida is going to put stress on our, on our adrenals, and that's going to have to help to kind of come to the rescue of helping to heal inflammation in the gut and in the body. So we got candida here. Candida in the gut, it could potentially cause some of these tight junctions to unzip. It's a stressor. Endotoxins, bacteria, gluten, food allergens, these critters can cause a leaky gut. I've done lots of videos on leaky gut. And we have candida here. I'll just put it in a C. And these stressors here can cause some of the tight junctions to unzip. And we get candida floating around in our bloodstream. That's not necessarily a good thing. Candida is one of these funguses that can actually produce its own toxins. So for instance, with bacteria, we have something called lipopolysaccharide or endotoxin. Well, with fungus or candida, we have mycotoxin. And mycotoxin does a couple of different things. It's one, it's going to create this byproduct called acetaldehyde, acetaldehyde. And acetaldehyde is a stress on the liver. So I'm going to write that out, acetaldehyde. It's a stress on the liver. I have lots of patients that have come to me and they say, you know, when I eat bad, I kind of feel drunk. Typically, that's the byproduct acetaldehyde that comes out from the fungus. It goes to the liver, has an effect right on the liver. Also, acetaldehyde creates this compound in the brain called salsolinol, and salsolinol can affect the substantia nigra of the midbrain and the cells that produce dopamine and potentially cause vertiginous kind of symptoms, a little bit of dizziness, and uh, Parkinsonian kind of symptoms. There's actually a couple of studies on this fact. Google um, fungus or candida and acetaldehyde and salsolinol, you get a couple of studies uh, addressing this mechanism. But again, we have candida, a couple of different kinds of funguses, right? We have candida rhodus rolla, candida crucii, candida albicans. Albicans is the big one. This is the one that's going to cause your jock itch. It's going to cause your yeast infection. It's going to cause your athlete's foot. Uh, it's going to cause your fungal nails, your fungal toes, and your dandruff typically. So again, the mechanism I'm exploring here is candida and leaky gut. So we have candida here. This is a cross section of your intestinal tract. So we can imagine putting some candida right here in the gut. That's going to put stress on the gut lining. So this lining here is zoomed up right here. So you're going to see we have bacteria, parasites. Um, we may have bad bacteria, candida, viruses, right? All of these things are going to cause our tight junctions, right? These are our tight junctions here. These are the microvilli, or we have essentially the microvilli right above these tight junctions. But these junctions are nice and tight, and they're basically the mechanism of, that provides a barrier between the inside of the gut and the blood. And stressors like candida can cause those tight junctions to open up just like so and allow undigested food particles, uh, bacteria, and even candida into the blood. So a couple of things candida can also do. I already talked about the mechanism here with acetaldehyde and stress. I also talked about the adrenals, right? Our body has to produce cortisol to cover up a lot of this inflammation. You got a smoldering fire. Imagine the adrenals are like the fire hose. The water is going to drop while we put out the fire in the gut. So we dig a little bit deeper here. Let's dig a little bit deeper. So regarding candida, it also produces mycotoxins. Like I mentioned, I mentioned the acetaldehyde, but mycotoxins can also disrupt peristalsis. So peristalsis are like these wave-like contractions in your colon and your small intestine. It's basically the contractions that help um, like force out your stool. So it's kind of like um, if you got a, toy, uh, a, a toothpaste tube and you got that toothpaste tube at the very end, you're kind of like rolling it up to get that last bit of toothpaste up. 
Well, that's what these peristaltic wave-like contractions do. They're there to push out the stool. The problem is mycotoxins will actually disrupt those wave-like contractions and prevent you from pushing out your stool on time. So if we're not pushing out our stool every day, about 12 inches of stool per day, we're gonna to start to reabsorb a lot of these toxins. So one of the big things we see with candida is we see constipation over here, constipation, and constipation creates, leads to auto intoxication. So medicine likes to use big words that make it hard for people to understand. We just break it down, right? Auto means self, you're intoxicating, poisoning, you're poisoning yourself. You could say it a lot easier by just saying you're poisoning yourself, but that's what auto intoxication means. So we have constipation from mycotoxins, right? From these funguses that can then drive into auto, auto intoxication. It's not a good thing. And that's gonna lead to more leaky gut, right? This is the mechanism here. And this is one of the biggest mechanisms here behind autoimmune disease, right? Autoimmune disease is, is the biggie. That's something we really want to be careful of. So let's talk about lab testing. I test for candida all the time in my office. We'll look at it via the stool. We can do a stool test that will test candida. We can do blood. Blood tends to be a pretty good mechanism to look for candida. Candida is hard to find in the stool. A lot of companies aren't able to test it too well. I'm finding on the Metametrics Genova test, it's coming up more frequently, but I find I get it more when I look at the blood. When I look at the blood, I'm actually looking at IgM, IgM, G, and A. And your M and A are gonna be your more acute. It's an active issue, it's an active infection. So when we look at the blood, we're gonna look at IgM, IgG, and IgA. Via the stool, we'll, we'll try to culture it out and see if it comes back in the stool. If it comes back in a stool culture, it means you definitely have a fungal or candida issue. If it doesn't come back, well, it doesn't necessarily rule it out, FYI. Um, there are some limitations with stool testing, but if it doesn't come back, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not there. A lot of times with lab tests, there can be a decent amount of false negatives, meaning if you got a positive, there aren't many false positives. So if it comes back positive, it's there. If it comes back negatives, there's a good chance it's a false negative. It could be, especially if you have symptoms that would lead to say there's an infection. And again, clinical signs and symptoms. So what does that mean? Let's go over that. Um, do you have a lot of flatulence? Does your, do you, does your flatulence essentially do your farts stink? Do they smell? Is there a lot of odor there? Someone walks into your bedroom, does it smell kind of yeasty? Um, do you have a history of jock itch? Do you have a history of athlete's foot or a history of yeast infection? These are all candida based. Do you have any rashes on your skin that kind of move around or that you haven't really treated well and they're still there? Not, not psoriasis, not eczema or dermatitis, but just it's more of a blotchy kind of rash that doesn't really rise up. That's will be more of a fungal rash. Also, um, looking at your fingernails, do you have orange or yellowy fingernails or toes? Do you have chronic dand uh, dandruff where you have to use like a shampoo like Selsun Blue or something like that? These are gonna be all signs of candida. Do you see your tongue? Does your tongue get kind of white? That nice, gentle, whitish yellow hue over the tongue, that's called thrush. Now thrush is like the ultimate candida because it's really white, but if you go on Google image, you'll see some that are very subtle and some that are just pure white. So if you have any bit of that there, there's a real good chance that you have a candida infection. So look at the stool test. If the stool test does not say it's there, it could still be there. Look at the blood. The blood says it's there. Well, it could still be there even not in the blood because the blood's an indirect measurement. This is a measurement of your immune system coming to the rescue. So it's indirect. We're looking for the fighters that typically would attack candida, not necessarily the candida by itself. So that's indirect. And then we have the clinical signs and symptoms, which in my opinion, as a clinician, this is gonna be your gold standard. If we see the clinical signs and uh, symptoms of candida, it's there. So let's talk about treatment options. So if you are a chronic candida or fungal issues, I always think the diet is the best place to start. So a good book to read is The Fungus Link by Doug Kaufman. Essentially really having a diet with good fats, good proteins, carbohydrates from primarily non-starchy vegetables, avoiding nuts, relatively speaking, outside of almonds, you can't do peanuts, uh, cutting out all grains, all legumes, all dairy outside of grass-fed butter, and then the only fruit you could have are berries, 
um, green apples, grapefruits, lemon, and lime. Sh fruits that are lower in sugar. The key is you don't want to starve all sugar out. You want just a little bit in there because if not, these fungus can go into these cyst or spore-like states that make it harder for them to kill. So just, just giving it a little bit, some berries, a little bit of green apple, one to two servings of these lower glycemic fruits is a really good place to start. So the diet's where you want to be off the bat. Next, herbs. We have herbs like grapefruit seed extract. We have undecanoic acid. Um, we have various berberines. We have oil of oregano. These are great herbs. Again, the key is using them in high enough dosages. Typically, a combination of those two or three can be a great place. Podiarco, for instance, another great herb. Also, I see a lot of people with deeper issues. I just saw a patient today that came back on his blood work with a fungal infection. IgM was very high, IgM for candida. We get his lab test back in today, we look deeper, came back positive for Giardia. And Giardia is a really nasty infection. So we could be treating his candida till the cows come home and nothing's gonna happen because we found Giardia deeper in. So I always urge patients, if you think you have chronic fungal issues, we gotta look deeper. You wanna rule out the deeper infections because that that's like analogous to pulling grass out or pulling a weed out right at the surface, right? You gotta pull the weed out at the roots. If you don't pull it out at the roots, it's gonna grow back. And that's like treating candida when there's an underlying Giardia or H. pylori infection. It's just not gonna get fixed. So moving forward here, we talked about a lot of things, fungus and candida and leaky gut and connecting it with auto intoxication and the lab work and the diet. A lot of information in this video. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed, that's okay. If you have chronic gut issues or health concerns or uh, adrenal fatigue that could be driven by this mechanism here, I'm gonna put something on the screen. Feel free and click on it, subscribe, get access to more of my videos and feel free and reach out so we can get to the bottom of your health issues and concerns. Thanks, this is Dr. J signing off. Have a great night.